Okay, so far we talked about some equilibrium problems, and we basically said that sometimes you may have reactants going to products, and you have some numbers of reactants, and you have zero products, and we said, oh, that's got to go to the right. Or we said you could have reactants going products, and I may have some numbers of products, and I have zero reactants, and we said, oh, this reaction has to go to the left. Okay. Okay. Well, what happens if I have reactants going to products, and I have numeric numbers on my reactants and numeric numbers on my products. Which way does it go? Okay. Well, this is what we're going to talk about now. In this case right here, how do I decide which direction the reaction will go uh, if I have numeric values of reactants and products? To answer this question, we're going to substitute the current concentrations into the reaction quote expression and compare it to Kc. So basically, you're going to set up your expression just like you would Kc, except we're going to call it Qc, which means we're putting the initial values in there, not necessarily equilibrium values. The reaction quotient Kc is an expression that has the same form as the equilibrium constant expression, but whose concentrations are not necessarily a equilibrium. They may not be equilibrium values, they are initial values. Uh, so basically we put it into that equation to determine if we had equilibrium. If I plug in those initial values and that Q is equal to Kc, the same value, then that tells me I'm at equilibrium. Okay, so this is a way of determining where we stand. And if I'm not there, and that Qc is not equal to the Kc, then what I can do is make a comparison to that Kc to determine which way the equilibrium is going to go to establish that equilibrium. For a general reaction, A, B, C, and D, we could write a QC just like we would with our KC. Okay? It would be our products over our reactants. So it would be the concentration of your C to the C, concentration of your D to the D, divided by concentration of A to the A, divided by B to the B. Major difference here is that we have I here instead of EQ. I meaning our initial value. Okay, the initial amount. We don't know if it's equilibrium or not. It may be, but we'll find out by stick, sticking it into the equation. Okay, this is a set up exactly the same as your KC. The only difference is for KC, we're saying they are equilibrium values. We know that they are the equilibrium values and they're equal to that K value. In this case, we don't know if they are or not. Okay, we'll find out by sticking them into the expression, but the expression is written exactly the same. Products raised to their um, coefficient divided by reactants raised to their coefficient. If you do the calculation in your QC equals KC, then you're at equilibrium. Those are the equilibrium concentrations. You're at equilibrium. Now, what happens if QC is greater than KC? Okay, well, what we're saying is, is this reaction is going to have to shift to the right or to the left until it establishes equilibrium again, which means that that Kc has to go down in size before it can begin to equal up to that Kc. So the question comes up, okay, how can I look at this mathematical expression and get Q, Qc to decrease? Well, looking at it on a mathematical basis, my numerator would have to decrease for the Q to decrease. Okay, so I need that to decrease. Or another way of looking at it, my pro, my pro, my reactants or my denominator here would have to increase because the larger the larger my denominator gets, the smaller my my Q would get. Okay, well, what in essence will be able to work that way from the equation? Okay, so in essence, I'm looking at consuming my products and producing my reactants, well, which way would this have to go for that to happen? Well, that would mean that this would have to go to the left, okay? This would be consumed, and this would be produced. So, if Q is greater than Kc, it will go to the left, shift to the left, until equilibrium is established. Not forever, until we reach that point of equilibrium, then my forward, revert, my forward rate will equal my reverse rate, and we have an exchange going on again.
Okay? So you can either memorize it, Q bigger than K, shift left, or figure it out mathematically. I suggest figuring it out because when you memorize things, sometimes you mismemorize it or you forget it, etc. If you understand how to figure it out, you will always remember how to do it. Okay? So we're just looking at it from the standpoint of mathematics. Well, what happens if Q is less than K? Once again, I can look at this mathematically. If Q is less than K, then I need that Q to get larger. Okay, how can Q get larger Get larger by looking at the math? Okay, well, in that case, for Q to get larger, what has to happen to C and D? Okay, they would have to get larger as well. Which at the same time, I can make Q bigger by what happening to A and B. They will have to decrease. They will have to decrease. Okay, well, what such scenario would give me a case where C and D is getting bigger and A and B is getting smaller. That's a case of shifting to the right. This is a case where this is being produced and my A and B is being consumed. Okay, which means for Q less than K, it will shift to the right. Once again, memorize it or be able to figure it out. And once again, it will shift until it reaches equilibrium, and then we have our exchange going on again because the rates will be equal. Let's look at an example and see if we can predict which way it's going to shift. Now, this is the first part of a problem. Eventually, you might have to do this as well as the rest of the problem trying to calculate your equilibrium concentrations. So you might have to do a Q step as well as the rest of the problem. This particular one, we only concentrate on the Q right now. Have a reaction, nitrogen gas, hydrogen gas gives me ammonia gas. Got a 50 liter vessel, contains one mole of nitrogen, three moles of hydrogen, and 0.5 moles of ammonia. Is the system at equilibrium? Well, there's no way to tell by just looking at those numbers, so I would have to do a calculation. If not, in which direction toward reactants or toward products will the system shift to reestablish equilibrium at 400 degrees C? You're given the KC for the reaction of 400 degrees C is 0 0.500. The importance of the 400 degrees C is that the reaction is occurring at the same temperature as the KC. Well, we can't just look at these numbers and decide one way. We're going to have to physically calculate it because of the way that Ks are, include those coefficients. They're going to have powers. Also, the K itself will dictate which way things are going. How large K will help uh, dictate it one way versus a small K. So it's, it's something you have to determine ma mathematically, not by just guessing. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is calculate the concentrations because everything's concentration based. So I'll do my one mole divided by 50 liters gives me 0.02. Three moles divided by 50 liters is 0.06. And 0.5 divided by 50 liters is 0.01. Once again, I can't just look at these numbers and say, oh, it's at equilibrium or not. Those numbers mean nothing by themselves. You got to remember it's got a, the size of K dictates it as well as the ex mathematical expression with the orders there. So you're going to have to calculate it. So we're going to go and solve for Q. Well, how is Q set up? Just like K, it'd be concentration of ammonia squared divided by concentration of nitrogen divided by concentration of hydrogen cubed. Okay, But these are all initial values, so this is a Q expression. Okay, So I'll plug in my values. I'll plug in my ammonia, square that value, plug in my hydrogen, cube that value plug in my nitrogen and square that value, excuse me, to the first power of that value and solve for that, the, the, the Q. Okay, so if I plug those numbers in, 0.01 squared divided by 0.02 divided by 0.06 to the cube, I get 23.1. Now you may recall that Kc was 0.5 so the question is, am I at equilibrium? No, not at the equilibrium. Okay, so the next question is, which way is it going to shift? Well, you, your intention may be to go to looking at this and say, well, I got 0.02 and 0.06 on the reactant side and only 0.01 on the product side. Well, this has to go to the right because I got too much reactants, as I said, and try to I'm trying to um, warn you, you cannot 
just look at the numbers of moles or molarity and decide the direction because you have to account for that size of k. k is a very small number there, which means it doesn't go very far before it reaches equilibrium. Okay, so you have to account for that. So the best thing to do is to compare your q to your kc. And we said here that in this case, q is larger while QC is larger than KC, so mathematically, how does this have to fix itself? I need that Q to get smaller. How can Q get smaller? Well, it can get smaller by what? Having my products get smaller, or are my reactants getting larger? Well, how can that happen? That would occur by going to the left, okay, where this is being consumed, and over here is being produced which means it's going to shift to the left until it reaches equilibrium, okay? Contrary to what you would have thought by the numbers there, okay? So as I said, you have to calculate it. If you guess you got a 50-50 shot of being right or wrong, it's best to calculate it and figure out which way it goes. So if I'm given concentrations of every species, I need to figure out whether I'm going to the right or to the left by figuring Q out and comparing it to K. Because QC is 23.1 is greater than KC, which is 0.5, the reaction will go to the left. Okay, it's going to go to the left toward reactants, consuming products and producing reactants until it approaches equilibrium. Once it reaches equilibrium, then the reaction rate and forward rate will be equal and the reaction will just be an exchange. Homework gives you questions about Q and trying to predict which way things are going to shift. Okay. Remember, this is one part of the problem you may have to do later on with another problem if you want to get the minuses and pluses correct in your ice table.